Come on, don't tell me what God can't do. Don't tell me. I've seen it. Come on, don't tell me. Come on, is anybody with me today? Don't tell me. But my God, he can do anything at any time with anyone. Come on, don't tell me what God can't do. Hey, just, just high five three people and say, don't tell me. Don't tell me, and then you can be seated. Can I, can I start with this today? God is up to something powerful at TE Church. God is doing something right now at TE Church. And I don't know how long you've been here, and we've seen God do some incredible things throughout our 13 years. But I'm telling you, right now, it is miracle season at TE Church. Come on, God is up to something. And, and we're seeing the miraculous. You just heard stories of like only things that God can do. And what I want you to begin to understand is if God did it for them, he can do it for you. Nothing is impossible for God. So let, let's start believing that today. Let, let's just start kind of getting into that realm of thinking that God can do anything. When God does what we can't do, that's called the miraculous. It's the supernatural. But I believe in the supernatural, there is a partnership between God's super and our natural. Are you with me? God does the super, only what he can do, and then we do the natural, what we are called to do. When the walls of Jericho came tumbling down, that was God's super. But when God's people marched around and shouted, that was the natural. When Moses stood before the water and the Red Sea parted, that was God doing the super. But when he raised his hand over that water in faith, believing that God could do it, that was him doing the natural. When Peter walked on the water, that was God doing the super. But come on, somebody, when he got out of the boat, that was him doing the natural. And when David killed the giant Goliath. That was God doing the super. But when he picked up the slingshot, that was him doing the natural. And I want to talk today about these, this partnership, the importance of you and I partnering with God. He does the super and we do the natural. And when this happens, the natural thing that I want to see us do right now is start to shift our thinking from Doubt to possibility. Right now in the room, shift your thinking. Come on, my God can do anything at any time with anyone. All things are possible with God. All things are possible for those that believe. Come on, it's Jesus said, speak to the mountain and the mountain will move. Are there any mountain movers in TE Church today? Come on, we're believing that God can do the impossible here at TE Church. Speak to the mountain. Come on, I believe it today. Come on, we're, we're going to see some things today. And, and I, I want to talk a little bit about David, talking about David and Goliath. I want to talk about David because something that you need to understand is David experienced the miraculous throughout his life. But how many of you know that David was not perfect? David was a little jacked up. Come on, let's just be honest. David experienced the miraculous, but David also killed somebody, and he was an adulterer. He had an affair. But yet God moved mightily in his life. And I want to talk to the person that's in the room, and you believe that what you've done has disqualified you from a miracle that you haven't lived holy enough, you've not been perfect enough, and God does the miraculous for other people, but why would God do that for me? Because I know me and I know what I've done, and I just want to encourage you today that God doesn't give you a miracle because you deserve it, because no one deserves it. God gives you a miracle because you are God's children, and what wouldn't you do for your kids? You want to have... Woo. God wants to do good things for his children. It's not that we deserve it. None of us are good enough, but God wants to do something good because that is the nature of 
God. And David experienced this throughout his life. And David wrote this down in the 23rd Psalm. He said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, even though I'm going through a difficult time, even though people are talking about me on Facebook, even though my marriage is falling apart, even though I've been off and on the sobriety train, even though I'm dealing with a broken heart, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because God, you are with me. Woo! Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint me with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and forever and ever and ever. Surely goodness and mercy shall fall, not because I'm good, but because God's good. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to dwell in the house of the Lord because good things happen in the house of God. Come on, this isn't just a place where you gather for religion. This is a place of miracles. God can do anything. Woo! Somebody help me today. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days. Josh, come up here. I need your help today. All right? Josh, you stay right here. You're going to be goodness today. Okay? Melissa, come up here today. Come up here. Melissa, you're going to be mercy today. Everybody say hello to goodness today. Say hello to goodness and say hello to mercy today. Goodness is the unlimited blessings of God in your life. Okay? That's goodness. Mercy is God's favor on your life even when you're all jacked up. One more time. Goodness is God's Blessing, unlimited blessings from heaven on your life. Mercy, God's favor on your life. Tell your neighbor, favor ain't fair. Favor ain't fair. It's God's favor on your life, even when you're all jacked up. Now here, I'm going to give you two lines. You're going to have to say this. Ready? Here's your line. Blessings coming after you. Blessings coming after you. One more time. Blessings coming after you. Blessings coming after you. Here's your line. Favor going to follow you. Favor going to follow you. Now you got to say it like you mean it. Favor going to follow you. Favor going to follow you. So what am I saying? It says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. That means when I'm over here, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Blessings coming after me. Favor going to follow. Doesn't matter where I go, surely goodness and mercy are following me. Doesn't matter if I messed up before, surely goodness and mercy going to follow me all the days of my life. Not because I'm good, but because God's good. Surely blessings coming. Unlimited blessings coming. Coming. Come on. The favor of God coming on my life. You can't run from it. He's chasing you down today. Somebody shout, surely goodness and mercy. Come on. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Come on, somebody. Let's believe it today. Woo. And, and David, you can be seated. You can be seated. David understood that worship, he was a worshiper, that worship would, watch this, would set the mood for his miracle. Worship sets the mood for the miracle. And David wrote something in the psalm that I found interesting and I was confused by it because I'm a musician and it didn't make sense. It says that we are to praise God with the 10 string instrument. And I'm a musician, and Andy, you're a guitar player. There are no 10-stringed instruments that you know of, is there? 
Nate, no 10 stringed instruments. Austin, you only have four to worry about. What would you do with 10? There are no 10 stringed instruments. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what is this, God? What are you trying to say? Then I got it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Psalm 47, one. Clap your hands, all you people. Clap, use your instrument to praise God. Clap your hands, all you people. All you people, come on, praise God. It says with a loud song. Come on, put your hand, use your instrument right now to praise God. Put your hands together. It says praise him with a loud song. He doesn't want us to be church mice, y'all. Come on, it's okay to get loud in the house. Come on, we're not turning it down. We're not turning. We're just doing what people say, oh, T.E. church is too loud. No, we're just doing what the Bible said. We're going to praise him with a loud song. Woo! I want, you can be seated. I want us to remember something about this church. This church was founded in music ministry. Long before we were actually a church, we were a music ministry, and we used to travel around, and we were, we would do all this incredible music, and then I was actually the drummer at the time. We didn't even have a drummer. I was the drummer. So I would play the drums, and then I would run out to preach. Anybody remember those days? Anybody here? A few of you remember? Would you all like to see what that was like? How about if I do what we did back in the day? I'll play the drums, and then I'll come out and preach, and we'll see what that was like. Can we do that? Let's try it. That's how we did it back in the day. And then I would come up and preach and talk about the goodness of God. Come on. God can do anything at any time with anyone. I want us at TE Church to be reminded that this is a church that was born out of praise, born out of worship. And maybe you're here today and you're like, uh, you know, I like all this and I like the music, but all these people raising their hands and clapping, that's a little bit weird for me. Listen, can I say this? It was weird for me too, y'all. It was totally weird for me. But I want to give you four quick reasons why at TE Church we lift our hands and we put our hands together. Four, four quick reasons, okay, all biblical. The first thing, when you lift your hands out in the world, you're surrendering. Some of you, that's a familiar position because you've been up against a cop car before. Your hands were up. You're surrendering. What are we doing when we lift our hands? We're saying, God, you are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords. There is no one like you, God. I surrender, God, to your will for my life. We lift our hands and surrender. The second reason that we lift our hands is when we're hurting and we run to our Father with our arms outstretched to our Heavenly Father. And I just want to pause in this moment, and I know there's some of you in this room that you didn't have a great example with an earthly father, and I'm so sorry but I want you to know that you can run to your heavenly father at any time regarding anything and his arms are outstretched just waiting for you to come to him. And come on, if you'll just lift your hands to your heavenly father today. 
Then the third reason that we lift our hands is we're celebrating. We're celebrating. We're excited. And I want to just give you my personal story, what changed for me, because I was that guy looking at everybody else going, I love Jesus, but they're just all weird. You know what I'm saying? They're just little, little, little religious kooks, you know. I was at a Pittsburgh Steeler game, and I mean, I was in it. My face was painted. I was all in it. I mean, I was like, if we're going to go, we're going to go. And it was a playoff game, and I'll never forget, I was sitting in the south end of the end zone, and I forget who it was, maybe, maybe Plaxico Burst, I forget, but there was a, a, a receiver that, you know, when receivers catch, and they put their feet right on the line, and they, like, stretch out to make the catch, and he made that catch, and I remember 70,000 people went crazy, and I was going crazy celebrating because we had just won the game and in the middle of that chaos and noise suddenly everything went silent and I clearly heard God speak to me and said you'll raise your hand for the Pittsburgh Steelers but you won't raise your hands for me the one that lifted you out of the muck and the mire you've won the eternal game and you won't lift your hands for me and the last reason is the Bible says come on to lift your hands in the sanctuary and praise the Lord so at some point at TE Church, we're going to do what the Bible says. We're going to get off our, I'm freaked out, I'm, I'm overwhelmed, it's uncomfortable. It is not about being uncomfortable. It is about praising the Lord because he is worthy, he is good. You don't know what he's done for me. Before you look at that person beside you that's a little bit over the top, maybe you need to take a step back and consider what the Lord has done for them. You don't know where they were. You don't know the situation they were in. You don't know how low they were down, and they're excited. Come on, we're going to pray. I see some people back here unashamed to praise the Lord. Come on, that God is good. Come on, let's put our hands together. Use your instrument, right? Let's take 10 seconds. 10 second praise break. Get on your feet and make some noise for Jesus today. Come on, make some noise. 10 seconds. us to be a church that praises because watch this David understood that worship was his weapon that set the mood for the miracle and I don't want us to be a church that at one time was on fire and now we just smell like smoke come on we are still burning at this place we are still on fire for the Lord we are unashamed I don't want any old stale religion come on I need something real in my life I need to woo, I need the living God to show up in my life I don't need to just come and like sit through uh, bleh, 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 bleh. I know I, I probably sound like that sometimes but y'all got to get used to it blah blah because I'm going to keep on telling people about Jesus as long as I got breath in my lungs I'm going to keep telling people about Jesus he's the way y'all he's the miracle worker he's the way maker there's nothing come on get into faith start believing right now there's nothing my God can't do there's nothing that you've done that's disqualified you from the miraculous of God on your life. Some of you have wandered into this place today. You just wanted to come in. You were hoping no one would even see you today. See, you look okay on the outside. But that inside, look at me. That's what God wants to touch today. That's what God wants to touch today. It's on the inside. David, we're talking about David. David was a man, you know, you talk about people that you'd love to meet in Scripture, and someday when you get to heaven, I hope to meet some of these people. But David was wild, y'all. Like David, whoo, killing giants. And he's out messing around, like, and he gets back on track. I'm like, Dave, bro. But David finally watched this. He got it. He got his life together. And he got, he got headed in the right direction. And God was moving in a mighty way because God knew that David was a man after God's, God's heart. At the end of the day, man, he loved, he loved the Lord. 
and they had just won a great battle against their arch enemy, the Philistines, and they were bringing the Ark of the Covenant back to where it belonged. And David was so excited about this. And I want to read this to you in 2 Samuel. I want you to picture this in your head. David, this great warrior who was also a great worshiper, now coming back after the victory. And it says, And David danced before the Lord with all his might, wearing a priestly garment. Time out. Priestly garment, I don't know a lot about it, but I know there's not a lot to it. Some of the women in the church are praying their husband will dance before them tonight in a priestly garment. Hallelujah. Some women are praying the opposite. Don't you dare put more clothes on, babe. I love you. Get dressed. You know what I'm talking about? David danced before the Lord with all his might, wearing a priestly garment. So David and all the people of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouts of joy. Somebody shout right now. With shouts of joy and the blowing of ram's horns. But as the ark uh -oh, of the Lord entered the city of David, Michal, the daughter of Saul, looked down from her window in disgust and contempt. What was he doing acting like that? When she saw David leaping and dancing before the Lord, she was filled with contempt for him. I wasn't there, but I think this is how it may have went, the conversation. Mikhail goes, what are you doing? You look like a fool. You are just, look at you, dancing and shouting and, acting all crazy. And I think David's response may have been potentially something like this. Baby. Honey. Something you need to understand. I wasn't dancing for you. I was dancing for the one that took me from the pasture to the palace. I was dancing for the one that gave me the head of a giant. I was dancing for the one when everyone else saw a failure, saw me as something special. I was dancing for the one that when everyone else was calling me a shepherd, he was calling me a king. Come on, that's who I'm dancing for. So you have to excuse me if I get a little bit excited today because my audience is not an audience here. My audience is an audience of one there. Come on, worship sets the mood for your miracle. I'm almost done. Let's end it with this. End it with this. Some of you, here's what you need to do. You need to, need to do something in the natural and you need to just shake it off you today. You need to get it off you. Bitterness, get it off you. Unforgiveness, shake it off. Anger, shake it off. Guilt, shame, shake it off. Listen, this is a word for somebody. Pride, thinking this doesn't apply to you, shake it off. Addiction, shake it off. Heartache, shake it off. Fear, shake it off. Sickness, shake it off. Financial worries, shake it off. Nothing's impossible for God. If God is for me, who can be against me? There's nothing that my God can't do. In Isaiah 61, 3, it says this, and Isaiah was a prophet speaking on behalf of the Lord, but I believe that God has sent me today to tell you the same thing that Isaiah told them. In fact, the Bible says, he has sent me to provide for all those who grieve in TE Church. to provide for all those that are broken in TE Church. To provide for all those that are hurting, that have a hang up or a habit that they can't get over in TE Church. And here's what God said. Today, we're gonna to give them crowns instead of ashes. Today, today we're gonna to give you the oil of joy instead of tears of grief. 
And then he said, you're going to put on a garment of praise instead of a spirit of weakness. And this is so important. This is where God does the super and you do the natural. Because God can do what God can do, but there's an exchange that takes place. And you've got to put on the garment before he gives you the spirit. you got to put something on. And listen to what I'm telling you. Before you put it on, something has to come off. What has to come off of you today? Some of you, you've been praying for God to do something in your life and you're walking around, man, I'm sad and I'm depressed and I'm angry and I'm hurting. I'm just telling you, get in a position right now with your thinking that that's no longer who you are. The enemy tried to convince you that's the way that your life was going to be, but it's Miracle Sunday at TE Church and things are about to turn around right now. Things are about to change right now. It's not going to be the way that it's all Always been. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You set a table before me in the presence of my enemies. My cup overflows. You anointed me with oil and surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Come on. Goodness and mercy is coming. There's nothing that my God can't do. Come on. My God is able. Come on, let's believe it today. Come on, let's believe it today. My God is able, amen? My God is able. There's nothing he can't do.